right, so in the previous tutorial, we talked about the um, decimal module, which helps us with floating point numbers and their inaccuracies. There's one other module that can help us as well, and that's the fractions module. Now, you probably won't use this all that often, so basically in this tutorial, we're just going to overview it, show you how to use it. But I wouldn't focus too much on it because unless you're writing a program that deals mainly in fractions, you're probably going to use the decimal module. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. First, we need to import the fractions module. So we'll do from fractions Im import all. All right. Now, to break down a fraction or a, nom a nominator and a denominator, we need to use the fraction um, class. So fraction. All right. And then we'll use 6 as the nominator and 10 as the denominator. Hit return. If it could be broken down, which it could, it's broken down to 3 and 5. Pretty cool, right? <clears throat> now let's take a look at another one. Let's do a fraction. 1 is the nominator and 3 is the denominator. Hit return. And we get fraction 1 and 3 because this can't be broken down, so it returns. So it's back to denominator and denominator. All right. Uh, one more for... Uh, practice sake, we'll do fraction 20 as the nominator and 8 as the denominator, and we get fraction 5 and 2. Pretty sweet, right? All right, so looking at these numbers, or looking at this right here, if we return this to a user as a fraction 5 and 2, user's probably going to be like, what in the world is that? Well, guess what? There's an easier way to return it and make it look more like a fraction since we're working with fractions. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do A is equal to fraction 2299. And then we're going to do uh, print A. So when we print the fraction, it's going to actually return to us something that looks like a fraction, nominator and denominator. So that's pretty cool. Um, so now if we're working with fractions with a user, we can actually print out the um, actual looking fraction versus the fraction class and denominator and denominator because if we print it out like this, the user probably isn't going to understand it. Um, we can also add and subtract and multiply fractions, so let's take a look at that. We're going to take create uh, two fractions here, so we're going to do fraction... 2 is the nominator, 3 is the denominator, and let's do C represents fraction, 2 is the denominator, and 9 is the denominator, hit return. Now let's do B plus C. Oh, we get fraction 8.89, sweet. All right, let's do um, B minus C. We get 4 and 9, okay. And let's do B times C. All right, we have 4 and 27. So that all works like it's supposed to when we add and subtract and multiply uh, fractions. So that works. Um, now, we can also work with floating point numbers with the fractions. So let's take a look at that. Let's do fraction 1.25. And we get 5 denominator and 4 denominator. I'm going to clear my screen so we can better see this. We'll do another one. Uh, let's do um, fraction. Oops, it's got to be capital fraction. Uh, 2.5. Let's do this time. And we get 5 and 2. All right, that makes sense. Um, all right, here's one that's going to really screw you up. Watch this. Fraction 1.33. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Well, here's where the floating point numbers and inaccuracies can screw with the fraction. Now, we have two options to fix this. The first option would be to put this in a string. All right, so let's take a look at that. Fraction. Uh, string. 1.33. Close out our string. Close out our fraction class. Hit return. And we get 133 over 100, which makes sense. All right. Or we can use the limit. Limit denominator method. So let's take a look at that. Fraction 1.33. Then we're going to call the method limit denominator. If I spell that right, hit return. And there we go. So limit, limit denominator method 
we'll actually break it down like it's supposed to be. Um, if we just call the fraction on some floating point numbers that have inaccuracies, like 1.33, it has an inaccuracy, it will return to us something funky like this. All right. So um, the limit denominator will give us the lowest possible reasonable um, denominator. All right. So if you have any questions about the fraction module, let us know via our form on mastercode.online. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next section where we start talking about strings. Have a nice day.